Let's, uh, let's be brave now and uh, click GarageBand and let's see what happens. Troubleshooting GarageBand on your iPad or your iPhone and some of these tips will actually go across to Mac. There's five things that I suggest before you do everything, before you do the complex stuff, before you go to Apple support, before you come and ask me, you can ask me, but I'll tell you these five things. These are the simple things. Number one, turn it off and on. And this is, this is called the universal fix for a reason because it does just fix so many things. If you don't know how to turn off and on your iPad or your iPhone, usually it involves holding down a couple of buttons. Here on the iPhone, you just need to hold the volume up and the power button and that'll pop up there and you'll be able to just flick it, the power off, and then to turn it back on, just hold down the power button and it'll come back on. The same on your iPad. You can just hold down the, the two buttons there, usually the power button and the volume up button, and hold those down and you'll get the power off. Flick it off, wait a little while. I, I know, look, a lot of these stuff don't have moving parts. The wait a while was from the, the time where you had, you know, spitting hard drives and you had fans and you had CPUs. You just let everything cool down. Even though these things don't heat up too much, I still like to use this advice. Just let everything cool down because sometimes heat can be a really weird, wacky thing that causes problems. So let it cool down. Give it five or 10 minutes if you can, or at least a couple of minutes. Power it back on. And so many times, so often, things have been fixed. Audio not connecting can be fixed. An app not loading can be fixed. You'd be amazed at how many things can be fixed by the old universal fix of turn it off and on. I know it sounds stupid, but it works. The other thing is to log in and out of your iCloud account. So if you're on an iPhone again or an iPad, if you go into your settings and you go to your iCloud settings, you can actually log in and out of your account. And this fixes things, especially like uh, if you've got syncing issues. So if you've got problems, if you get like, this file cannot be opened, this file cannot be found, this file is corrupt. If you've got those sort of issues, just logging out and back into your iCloud can work. So if you just go in, find your iCloud, you can just search for it, uh, and you'll see where you're logged into your iCloud. It, it's in your, the weird thing is you're logged in a bunch of places. So you're logged in in your app store. You're probably logged into like your wallet app. You're logged into a bunch of places. So just search iCloud and find where you're logged in. Sign out. So just sign out of that and then sign back in. So literally just go log out, log back in. And especially if you're getting problems with the Files app in particular. So if you, you're familiar with the Files app here in iOS, you'll know that you've got two different locations. You've got On My iPad and you've got your iCloud Drive. And sometimes you're trying to load something from the iCloud Drive and it says, oh, this file format can't be supported. This, this file is corrupt and will never be right again. Sometimes it's just having a little, a little kitten. And if you just log out of that and then log back in, you'll be good to go. Number three is to close all your apps. So sometimes you've got a background app that's running that is taking over, especially when it comes to audio issues. And the best thing to do, so you can see here, I've just been playing around and I've got GarageBand, Final Touch, App Store, Files and Settings. Now, sometimes GarageBand and Final Touch, they don't play nice together because one Final Touch has grabbed the audio. So say Final Touch has jumped in here and it's grabbed the audio and it's grabbed the Steinberg UR22C that I've got plugged in there. And then I go back to GarageBand and let's just say I've got no sound. Well, sometimes it's just as simple as closing down all the apps in your background. So all you need to do is drag up from the bottom, drag up again and get to this screen. It's a double tap on your button. If you're on other things, it's a, it's a drag. This is a problem. Different devices have different ways to do this. But get to this screen. I'm sure you know how to. And then just flick up on each of these. Boom, 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 boom. Get yourself back to this level. And then from here, you can load up your Peppa Pig app. Like so. I don't know why I have Peppa Pig on here. Children, that's why. And then you know that this app is the only one running. It's not using any background apps. It's not doing anything else. And uh, you should have everything going fine and dandy. So number four is a GarageBand iOS specific thing. And it's to reset GarageBand. This is a something that fixes the problem of, well, it fixes a lot of problems, actually. It can, it can fix your, some of your corruption issues. It can fix some of your file issues, but it'll especially fix where you've loaded a project and say you, every time you load into GarageBand, if it keeps trying to load a project that's corrupt, it's simply not going to load. So you need to do something about that. Or you get a black screen. So if you load up GarageBand, you get a black screen and you just have to close it and it won't ever work, you want to reset GarageBand. Thankfully, to do that, this is where having the separate settings is handy because to do that, you can actually jump into your settings app here. You can scroll down and find GarageBand in your list of apps like so and tap on that one 
And then you'll notice that there's this option down the bottom here, Reset Garage Band. So it says Reset Garage Band back to its original settings and restores all sound samples. Sounds a bit scary, but it doesn't do anything to any of your projects. So it won't actually change that. It will change some of your defaults. So like your 24-bit audio, you might have to change. Some of these other little settings that are in your advanced settings, you might have to change. And just to show you how not scary it is, gulp, we're going to do it for you here now. So if I tap on Reset Garage Band, all I need to now do is close out of that Files app. And now that'll trigger that the next time I open Garage Band, it is going to go back. Now, again, before you do this, the one thing I will say is make sure that all of your GarageBand files are backed up or that they're on your iCloud drive. So you know how we talked about before with files? If you've got anything stored here, it doesn't get rid of it. So you can see that funk my brass there. It won't get rid of that. But some people have claimed that it does to them when they do this. So just keep that in mind. I would always use your location, your GarageBand iOS on your iPad, on my iPad location. But let's, uh, let's be brave now and uh, click GarageBand and let's see what happens. There you go. Welcome to GarageBand. You can do all the things. And if we come in here, yeah, there's our GarageBand sound library. Everything is cool. We can even go, as I said, on my iPad, there's my funk, my brass. It's all going to be good to go. But what I may find is up here in some of, say, my advanced settings. Yeah, look at that. 24-bit audio resolution. So make sure that if you ever do your reset GarageBand, come straight back here to your advanced settings. Always put 24-bit audio on and turn run in background on. I normally have that on there. Yep, so we can run that back app in the background. By the way, if you are having problems, turn that off. If you're having that problem with the conflicting audio between devices, make sure you don't have run in background on because that can be another troubleshooting tip there. But I like run in background on so we can save that one there. That's your reset garage band. The final thing that you may want to do, and this is controversial because sometimes it can do the opposite of what you want to do, and that is to update your iOS. So if you go into the settings here and you go to general and you go to software update, you'll notice here that I, because I am stuck in the past, I am on iPad OS 15.7. Uh, whereas the latest update is iOS, iPad OS 16.1.1. In fact, I'm not even updated to 15.7.1, which I should be because that's an additional security. So I'm, I'm living on the edge in a big way here. I'm going to update that immediately after the show before anyone decides to come and hack my iPad. So yeah, updating to the latest iOS is good. It can also be bad in that uh, it will sort of make some incompatibility with some apps. So my advice remains, don't update. If you've got the latest secured version of the last one, so say iOS 15, give it at least a few weeks. Let other people be the guinea pig before you go and decide that you're going to, to go to the latest and greatest. And then once everything's cool, usually it's the point one. So at the moment, it's iPadOS and iOS 16.1.1. That's usually about your safest bet to wait for that point one update and then you'll be good to go. So there you go. There's five things you can do. You can turn it off and on. You can log out and log back into your iCloud. You can also close and reopen all of your apps. You can reset GarageBand and you can update your iOS or your iPad OS. And most of those are the same on a Mac or a PC. These are pretty generic kind of things that you can do that will help you get out of trouble when things aren't going your way.